What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're going over some color grading techniques to help you isolate the subject in your shots. These techniques won't only make your talent pop off the screen, but they'll help direct your audience's eyes exactly to where you want them to look. I'll say there's three very important aspects to color grading. One being correcting the shot, two being stylizing the shot, and then three would be giving the shot direction. And when I say giving a shot direction, I mean taking a shot where there's a lot to look at and stylizing it in a way where the audience knows exactly what to look at. At the end of the day, we just wanna take the audience on a journey. And by leading their eyes, you can kind of take their hand and walk them through your story or creation. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just drag one of our clips in here to our timeline. And if we take a look at this, uh, it's a pretty good looking clip. I mean, it is uh, the Ursa Mini 12K and this is an 8K clip. I've just got this in a 4K timeline. Uh, I've always usually got just a normal UHD timeline set up, 3840 by 2160 in 23.976 frames a second. Uh, if you wanna check out my project settings video, you can check out how to get that as your default setting every time you start. But um, this file itself is 60 FPS and it's 8192 by 4320, so it's huge. I've uploaded this 8K version and a 4K version that you guys can download and follow along. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do to this clip is a couple things here in the edit tab before I move over to the color tab, just to smoothen out the shot. First, I'm going to go to the transform and go to the zoom and just scale this up to crop out the bars at the top and bottom. Uh, then I'm going to come down here to stabilization and I'm going to change the mode to similarity and then the smooth to, let's say 0.500. And then I'll stabilize. And then now we should have a pretty smooth shot. And then I'm gonna add a dynamic zoom, uh, kind of pushing in just to make the shot a little bit more dramatic. Uh, and also that will kind of draw the eyes more to the subject. Now that's not always gonna work in every situation. And a lot of the time, just as a colorist, you don't even have the leeway to, to push shots in. But if you're working on your own projects like I am a lot of the time, then you do have kind of the leeway to take these liberties. So I'm gonna take this dynamic zoom, turn it on, and then I'm gonna press the swap button. And then if I come back here, you can see that we have a nice little push in which is pretty cool. And if I come over here to this drop down on the left, bottom left, and go to dynamic zoom, I have our properties here for the dynamic zoom and the green rectangle is our starting point and the red one is our ending point. I just wanna take our red uh, rectangle and move it to the top left a little bit so it stays a little bit more centered as it moves in. Nice. That's good enough. So let's go ahead and jump over to the color tab and we can start really making this shine. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add a LUT. And again, this is just Blackmagic Raw. Uh, so if I right click on this node, go to LUT and then Blackmagic Design, and then come down to Gen 5 Film to Extended Video. That is probably my favorite just starter LUT for the Blackmagic 6K or the 12K. Uh, it just looks so good. It almost has a style in itself. I love this LUT. Now, of course, there's other LUTs out there and depending on what you're looking for, um, this may not be the best LUT for you. Uh, but in this example, we're just gonna use this because it's kind of standard and it gives us a great starting point. And then from here, one thing I'm gonna do is add a node before this LUT uh, by right-clicking on this node and going to Add Serial node before and from there i'm going to try to recover some of these highlights but first i'm going to go over to the camera raw tab and then where it says project we can clip this and under where it says project we can click this drop down and go to clip and now we have full control over the raw settings over this clip so if we wanted to change the white balance um, we could do that with the tint and color temp or if we want to change the exposure we could easily do that here as well um, super awesome. Blackmagic Raw is so good at, at being able to, it's almost just like a raw photo. Uh, the, the same stuff you could, the same latitude you have with a raw photo, you almost have with, with video with Blackmagic Raw. And it's pretty incredible. So I'm going to reset this just because I made a bunch of changes I didn't actually want to make. And then from here, I'm just going to leave most of these settings as they are and then come down to highlight recovery and click that. And it barely made a difference to the eye, but if you look at the scopes, it gave us a little bit more range at the top end uh, there. And then from here, I'm going to go back to this, our first node, go down to the primaries, colors, bars, and go to the highlights and pull these down a little bit. And I pull our shadows up just slightly. And I like it right there. 
And we're just going to start from there. I know that seems crazy. It may seem a little dim, but we're actually going to bring out a lot more highlights as we go on. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do from here is add another node with Alt S. And then we're going to add a vignette. So I'm going to go over to the power windows and add a circular power window. I'm going to scale this up quite a bit. And then soften it with the soft one. And I may even scale this down. Kind of stretch it out. Because I really kind of want the vignette to happen around this section and then wrap around where these leaves are and then where this bark is over here. Uh, but most of our light is coming from this section and that's kind of where I want to hone the eyes in on uh, is this middle section here where the light in his face is. Uh, so if I just scale this down a little bit more and then soften it, we can click the highlight button at the top left and kind of see the section that we've gotten selected. So I can even come further in on this. I would say to about there. Move this up a little bit more. And I think we're going to roll with that. And then I'm going to click this invert button next to our circular power window. And this will make sure that everything around us is selected here. Then we can click off the highlight button. And I'm going to come over to the curves. And I'm going to make a point towards the top of this bark. I'm actually going to click our points in on the curves here. Uh, one of the easiest things to do with the curves and it's super awesome. So I don't want this bright part of the, the bark to get any uh, less bright than this. So I'm going to click right there. That way I'll make a point on the curves and that point's locked there. And then I'm gonna make a point in the darker part of the bark right here. And you can see it's made a dot towards the bottom of the curves. And now we can move that point and know that our brighter point is locked in. So if I move this down a little bit, nice and that already has made a huge difference in the shot and it almost made the whole shot seem like it had more contrast uh, and technically it does because we added contrast to the outside we added shadows to the outside and there's already these highlights on the inside so just that alone adds a lot of contrast to the whole shot and really makes the subject pop so i can pull that to about right here i like that i want it to still look pretty natural yeah maybe I'll split the difference there about right there it looks good maybe a little more yeah that looks nice and from there I'll make a new node with alt s and we'll go through it and label these nodes uh, so I'll right click node label and highlight and shadow and in this one of course right click node label what this one is vignette, which I'll just label vin. And this next one is going to be our curves and contrast. Curves, contrast. So from here, I'm going to go into the curves and I'm going to make a point on his face here in the highlights of his face. And then I'm going to go down to the shadows of his chin and make a point there. Because I really want to bring those even further down as well as the whole shot. So here we have our point at the bottom, and now we know that whereas where the highlights in his face are, that's already locked in. So we don't have to worry about uh, manipulating those or if those are gonna change. Now we just have those bottom uh, shadows selected, and now we know anything below the highlights on his face will be affected. So if I bring this down, that looks nice. That already looks beautiful really punchy really contrasty i love that and then from there we can click alt s and make a new node and this one is going to be a, a series of nodes series of parallel nodes so if we actually click on this node and then just hit alt p this will make us a parallel node uh, structure and these nodes will all work together so you'll see that you know the curves node comes out into this node it comes out into this node and they all blend back together uh, with this parallel uh, connector here and we're just going to make a, a series of highlight and kind of lighting adjustments uh, with these nodes. So the first one I'm going to label, uh, let's say, high punch. And with this one, I'm going to go over to the qualifier, click the highlight button up in the top left so we can see what we're qualifying. And then I'm going to move the lows of the luminance up. You guys have seen me do this several times to add more punch. And I'm going to try to get to the highlights of the subject. So the highlights and midtones, I can go about here and then I'll go to the L soft and soften this. 
That looks nice. And then maybe move the low up a little bit more, soften a little bit more. That looks great. Now I'll click off the highlight button. I'll go to our primaries bars and under our gain, we can move the gain up slightly. Actually, I'm gonna try to move the gamma up instead. Let's move the gamma up. Yeah, that's giving us more punch in his face and less in the trees, which is nice. So if I reset the gamma and then slowly work this up, you'll see that it's giving us a little bit more punch in his face, which is great. I love that. And his arms. So if I deactivate, activate, you can see it's added that nice dodge and burn kind of look to the shot. And now, our, I mean, overall, our whole shot looks incredible completely crazy now. If I just select everything uh, that we've done after the LUT and deactivate it, you can see we've made quite a difference uh, that's really added a lot of style, a lot of punch, and really kind of brought the focus in on just the subject. And we can continue to do a little bit more moving forward. In our next node, I'm gonna go over here to the power windows and then make a circular power window. And this is gonna be like a reverse vignette, a little bit, just a reverse vignette. Uh, so we're gonna kind of select our subject here Soften our power window quite a bit. I like that there. Let's click the highlight button. We can make this a little smaller. I'm gonna make this right in the middle of his shirt. And then from here, I'm gonna actually up the shadows. I'm gonna click on the curves so you guys can see this without the power window indicator. See that a little bit more, a little bit more glow on him. It almost looks like the sun is lifting his shadows a little bit more. That's awesome. Super sick. All right, let's make another parallel uh, node with Alt-P. And then I'll come up here and try to recover some of these trees. Now, there's a couple things we can do to make this these blown out trees look a little less blown out because there really isn't much information there. It's pretty much just washed right over, but we can add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more dynamics to really uh, make it seem like it's not as washed out as it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is click our highlight button and under the qualifier, we're gonna try to select just those highlights. So work our way up to about here, that works. Right here, then we'll hit the L soft and roll this up quite a bit and move the low up some more L soft. And from there, I'm gonna come over to the color wheels, the primaries color wheels. And I'm gonna to go to the gamma and I'm gonna shift the gamma in to the warm tone into kind of a reddish orange. And if I deactivate, activate, even that just looks a little bit more realistic. It looks more like the sun is falling on, you know, wooden trees and not whatever this is, this kind of pale uh, kind of look. So that will help us at number one. And then we can come over here to the mid-tone detail and I can minus this just a little bit. And then we'll push a little bit more warmth into the gamma. Maybe a little less. All right. And then we'll make another parallel node. And then we'll do the same exact thing. But what I want to do is click the qualifier, hit the highlight button so we can see what we're qualifying. Move the luminance, the lows up, 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 and then get a higher section of the trees. And then soften that higher section. Maybe we'll get it a little higher. Hit off the highlight, go to the primaries bars, and turn the gain up. See, that's giving us a little bit more. It almost seems like there's highlights within the highlights there. So we can shrink this down maybe a little bit. Hit the highlight button and then move these lows up. Boom. Now we're making more contrast in that section. See that's not so washed out and like there's no information over there. It's like we're adding some more information back that was never really there to begin with. And that that is really, really nice. And so moving forward, we're going to make one more parallel note. I know there's a lot of these, but that, this is all the fun right here. This is where you have all the fun in these parallel nodes. And then coming down, I'm going to go ahead and make another high punch uh, to our uh, subject's face and his skin. So move this up and I'm going to hit a much higher section of the highlights about right there. And then I'll soften that. And what we're doing is we're creating layers and more layers of punch and pop. 
Uh, and so if I soften this a little bit more, maybe bring this up a little bit further. So we just get his arms. Like we barely, we almost don't get any of the arms. And then we can hit off highlight button, come back to the primary bars and move the gain up. You see we're adding a little bit more punch there. I like that. That's beautiful. And one more thing we're going to do is try to sharpen his face. And so I'm actually going to make uh, another parallel node with Alt-P. Make a power window. Uh, I'll make a custom power window. And zoom in here. Make a little structure around his face here. Love it. Hit the highlight button. Soften this. Soften the inside. And then we can come over to the sharpen tool. And I'm going to go down to radius maybe 19. And then or scaling 19 and then radius 48. If I deactivate, activate, I can come down to maybe 47. Deactivate, activate, yeah. That's nice. Now I can come over to the track and we can track this out. And track it back. Beautiful. And this is looking pretty sick, if you ask me. So one last thing we could do, uh, hit Alt S to add a new node after the parallel uh, mixer here. I'm gonna move this over here. And then of course we can add a little bit of glow to really make those highlights a little less uh, wishy-washy, if you know what I mean. And even that alone really helps. Come down here to I honestly, I could do without this last punch. I like it on his face, but I do not like it on the tree. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna come to this, this number nine node actually, and I'm gonna make a power window around his face. That way we can just have that punch where we want it and not all over the whole shot. Let me go back and track. Boom. Love it. So we have a little bit more punch on his face. Just a little bit. You, you barely notice that, but it adds a little bit more punch, a little bit more contrast, and a little bit more pizzazz there in the shot. And right now, if we grab all of our parallel nodes and deactivate, what a difference that makes. Yet it looks natural and subtle. I love it. Uh, and so moving on, uh, I like our glow. Uh, we could do our, our super cinematic glow, come down to composite mode, soft light, shine threshold all the way down. And then from here, we can put our opacity at the bottom and work it up. I'm not mad at it. We could try to bring these trees down a little bit more in some of these parallel nodes like that. So they don't pop quite as much, so he pops more than anything. And that looks pretty nice. I am not upset with that. And if we look at it from just the LUT and then look at all of our adjustments, I mean, that is how you make your subject pop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you'll find ways to implement these techniques in your own workflow from time to time. And if you like this video, definitely go down there and click the crap out of that like button. And if you didn't enjoy the video, maybe just click the like button anyway. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I try to always reply. And make sure to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.